way I see sheriffs, like the Alberta police force, is de I definitely see that in a different way now. Like it scares me now whenever I see a sheriff, I, I don't have much respect for them now because of what they've done to me. You may recall the story of Jeremiah Lusing. He's a young farm boy in rural Alberta who was pulled out of his tractor by his neck, pushed onto the pavement and given scars that he has to this day. He was also punched in the face by Alberta sheriffs in an act of police brutality that is rarely seen in Alberta. Problem is, regular social justice warriors, folks who are opposed to police brutality, they weren't really interested in this case because Jeremiah was a white farm boy from rural Alberta. He was a Catholic. He doesn't fit the bill that Black Lives Matter really is interested in today, but police brutality of any kind is a problem. And this, what happened to Jeremiah was particularly egregious. The news today, well, the government of Alberta, their prosecutors have dropped all charges against Jeremiah and the charges that were ascribed to his brother. I spoke with them today at their farm. They took a few minutes out of their harvest to speak with me about what went on and why they think the charges were dropped. Well, I'm sure they saw the situation I was in and everything that happened to me and they you know all the support I'm getting like from Rebel and everyone else and that's mostly one of the reasons why they probably thought about dropping it because they don't need all this trouble especially if, when the court date comes. These are really great folks out here they're doing great work feeding the country and they're not at all the type of people that Alberta sheriffs or law enforcement should be prosecuting, giving criminal charges to. And it's really confusing why Minister Doug Schweitzer, who was then the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General for Alberta, didn't immediately throw out these charges. It took Minister Casey Madu, the individual who replaced Minister Doug Schweitzer as Minister of Justice and Attorney General, to have these charges completely thrown out. <laughs> I was grateful that I was able to speak with Jeremiah here today. The first time I came out to their farm to do the initial story on this, he was still too traumatized by what happened to speak on camera. He was also worried with pending criminal charges that he might incriminate himself. Since those charges have been dropped, he was happy to speak with me and I was really glad we were able to tell his story fully to let Albertans and Canadians know exactly what the consequences are for having a police force that is so out of touch with rural Alberta. The RCMP ships in officers from Montreal to police rural southern Alberta, central Alberta, northern Alberta, across the country. They're shuffling a deck of officers. Now, the problem with Alberta sheriffs is they're not equipped at all to be dealing with rural Alberta either. Their jobs typically are dealing with VIP protection, protecting courthouses, prisoner transfer, and for some reason they're also tasked with doing tech check stops in the middle of rural Alberta, a place that they rarely even visit, much less understand the customs and the law. See, the tractor that Jeremiah was in wasn't subject to the same laws that vehicles that everyday folks drive on the highways is. You don't even need a driver's license or a license plate to operate those vehicles, the tractor. But the police didn't know that, and the consequences were dangerous and violent for Jeremiah, leaving a scar that he has to this day. When I was approaching the check stop, which I didn't know what it was because I was too far away from the sign just to read check stop on it. I saw the lights though, and there's probably about 10 vehicles, nine or eight, 10 vehicles lined up. So the sign was still too far away to see when I approached the lineup. And I'm like, oh, my field's just down the road a little bit. I might as well just take the ditch the rest of the way and you know, hit my field. So I got into the ditch. And as I was uh, driving in the ditch, I saw this check stop sign. I'm like, oh, so I'll just keep driving until I get there and see what happens. And when I got to about, there's a crossroad. When I got to just about where the crossroad was, there's a sheriff waving me to stop. And he had a mask on and gloves. So I thought this had to do something with COVID maybe actually, like checking for COVID breath. And I'm not going to stop in the ditch because there's quite a steep slope there. It's just too dangerous. So I drove up on top of the crossroad and I, I thought I'd maybe stop there. And I wasn't even barely on the crossroad and a sheriff comes behind the vehicle and just slams the fender as hard as he can. And that's that's what made me mad. And like, you know, it scared me at first, like what the heck is he doing? And I look behind me and there's a sheriff there. And I so I stopped the vehicle and the tractor rolled to a stop. And I opened my door and asked him what he wanted. And then I couldn't quite make out the words he said, 
but I know from hearing the recording later, he said this is a mandatory alcohol screening check stop, but I never heard those words. The tractor, he was still too far away and the tractor was running. And then when he finally came to about where the door is, I could hear him better. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to shut the tractor off. And I said, no, because got to put the park brake on, then give it a few minutes to cool. Then I can shut it off safely and then walk out of the tractor. And I, so I declined that. And then he asked me to do a breathalyzer, which I th still thought was for COVID-19. Because, mm -hmm. you know, they're wearing masks and gloves and all that stuff. And like, what would they be doing? Why would they be doing breathalyzers for alcohol when there's COVID going on? Yeah. <laughs> And so I said no to that. And then he asked me maybe one more, two, one or two more times. And I said, no. And then, and then he asked me to, or actually he, he never asked me. He asked me one or two times and then I said, no. And then right away after that, he said, you're under arrest. And he climbed into the tractor like really fast and started grabbing me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm, I'm like, whoa, the park brake's not on, the tractor's not even off. You think I'm getting out of a tractor like that? Uh, it could roll, it could do anything, it's dangerous. And so I was holding onto the steering wheel in the seat. Like, I'm not getting out of the tractor in this situation. And, he, and, then he's, and then a sheriff came up from behind him and gave me a good whap in the face with his fist. And that's when I started bleeding because, you know, he hit my nose real good and my whole face right here. And so there's blood going everywhere and then... I was choking on blood and then the sheriff pushes me my face to the ground and so I and then he's like you're resisting arrest and I'm like no I'm not because he's on top of me I can't move and I mm -hmm. and I couldn't even tell really what was going on but I think a sheriff came around the door and opened the other one and is pulling on me from there that's what it felt like so I was being pulled from like two directions and then plus a sheriff on top of me and and I kept telling him I can't move I can't like I can't move I don't what are you doing get off of me and then finally when he realizes like he's on top of me and i can't move then he kind of gets off of me mm -hmm. and then he, they are able to pull me out of the tractor really fast mm -hmm. and i barely when i ran fell out of the tractor i barely landed on one leg but like you saw in the video the sheriffs took most of the fall one went flying down and when i was about on one leg then the sheriffs grabbed my neck one jumps up and grabs me and pulls me down and that's when i hit the ground and then they handcuffed me and then about when they handcuffed me and they checked my pockets and everything for weapons, which I don't have any weapons, but except a knife, they call that a weapon, I guess. <laughs> and that's when they stood me up and then they explained things a little bit better, like what this is. But they still didn't tell me what the breathalyzer was for. Like I asked like, I don't know, 20 or 30 times while I, while I was handcuffed and they're walking me to the cruiser put me in and they he would not explain he's like it's for public safety that doesn't tell me that it's for alcohol I mm -hmm. still never even knew what it was for and I kept asking him why do I have to do a breathalyzer for what reason yes it's for public safety but what is it and he wouldn't tell me that and he didn't tell me I was going to be a criminal after I deny a breathalyzer mm -hmm. He didn't explain things like that. I'd be under arrest or that was mandatory. I didn't know that either. Like I've never been in a check stop in my entire life. And then I happened to be in one with a tractor. It's crazy. Yeah. And then they stuffed me into the police cruiser and I, well, actually before they put me in the police cruiser, they wanted to check me with an ambulance because they saw blood and that they wanted to check the sheriff to make sure he didn't get or any infections or anything from my blood or any diseases, whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm, I haven't had food since morning and I haven't drank anything all day either. Cause I don't even have time to mm -hmm. take a drink of water. That's, that's the number one reason why my nose started bleeding. I was really dry. Mm -hmm. And yeah, up on your forehead here, the scar you were saying earlier, it's from concrete. Yeah. That's from mostly like falling on the pavement. And I was, my face was on the ground there on top of me and I there, you know, they're pushing my head yeah. really hard on the ground. Like one of them's got their knee on my head, so yeah. I can't move. And after I was checked clear in the ambulance, they put me into the cruiser and I probably sat there for two hours. The vehicle was turned off, so the, the windows weren't open. And you know, I'm sitting there and with handcuffs on and I'm fidgeting around trying to find a comfortable way, plus with the heat. 
and the sheriff comes in and out all for like two hours and I keep asking him how much longer how, what am I supposed to be doing here why am I here and that's when my parents arrived and then then that's when the situation happened with Dominic yeah. and, and my parents and then finally I asked them that they finally released me and let me go to my parents but during that whole time I asked many times to phone home and they wouldn't give me that chance they wouldn't they wouldn't let me have any chance of like water I told them I hadn't drank or eaten for hours since morning and you know most of the questions I asked him he ignored me he wouldn't and he'd just say we'll be here a little bit longer a little bit longer and then an hour later a little bit longer <laughs> that's all he could say so now the charges they've been dropped by the crown um what do you think caused that and and are you pleased with how that turned out well i'm sure they saw the situation i was in and everything that happened to me and they you know all the support i'm getting like from rebel and everyone else and that's mostly one of the reasons why they probably thought about dropping it because they don't need all this trouble especially if, when the court date comes and mm-hmm. and i'm you know i'm extremely pleased because then i can get back to my normal life and stop wasting time with this situation yeah. So that's definitely why I'm mostly pleased. But the it's still not over yet, I guess. You still have a problem with your yes. learner's permit, your driver's license that hasn't been returned to you. Even though you don't need a, a driver's license to operate a tractor on a highway, that's not actually a requirement. But they still, they've confiscated your license. Or, or, or what, what's going on there? Usually when they do suspend a license, they send a paper in the mail, like telling you to return your license to the nearest uh agency Mm -hmm. and so that paper as long as i have that paper i can send that to the lawyer and the lawyer will send it to the alberta government and ask him why they suspended my license for no reason Mm -hmm. and they'll look into that and hopefully i can get my license back from there but yeah suspending my license has also been a problem because now i've been trying to get my drivers for the past two years Mm -hmm. and I failed once because usually they fail you once so they make more money <laughs> <laughs> and then then COVID came and then you couldn't take the test for like another couple of months yeah. and then after that I've suspended and so I could still couldn't take the tests and so now I'm in this situation hoping I can get my learners back so I can at least take the test yeah. and get my drivers because that is very important on the farm my learners is already important enough because I can still drive certain vehicles like behind a tractor or something to the field yeah and that's been a problem so the sooner i get my learners back the better it is all right well thanks so much for your time and i hope that uh everything's healed up all right and that it's not traumatized you i think police generally um are good in this province but i think this this interaction that you had was just so unfortunate yes i hope so that i'm able to get back to my normal life as soon as possible yeah and that this is over has this changed how you view law enforcement in Alberta, Canada? Has it changed your perspective on them? Yes, that's one thing I definitely wanted to mention was uh, the way I see sheriffs, like the Alberta police force, is de- I definitely see that in a different way now. Like it scares me now whenever I see a sheriff, I I don't have much respect for them now because of what they've done to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think that? Do you think that that? I mean, the video of what happened to you just on Rebel News was seen over seven hundred thousand times. Thousands upon thousands of people in Alberta have seen what happened. Do you think that this has hurt uh, sheriffs? And do you think they're going to change? I hope so. That they realize that what this has caused and how many people see how their actions were. But I don't know, hundred percent, if that would if they would change from that or not. Mm-hmm which I don't think they will. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks so much. Rebel News put up a link at helpjeremiah.com that redirected to their GoFundMe, that put money towards their lawyers uh, and the tractor and the downtime and the rental tractor that they needed after the police destroyed the tractor that they were using. You can still go there and donate if you feel you need to. I wanna thank the family for bringing me onto their farm. They do have a beautiful operation. Uh, they have sheep, donkeys, horses, cattle. They even had a few roosters, and a few dogs. I'm sure Catherine McKenna would have been a great fan 
of this place. I want to thank, thank them again for allowing me to share their story about what is going on because the mainstream media certainly wasn't interested in doing it. They did put out a few pieces on it, but immediately that coverage died down. See, the mainstream media wasn't interested in this story at all. Sure, they sent one or two reporters out in the first place, but really their heart wasn't in the story because they don't care about rural Alberta. It was Rebel News' story hitting over 700,000 views that I think contributed to the social pressure against the Crown prosecutors and the Ministry of Justice that caused this to be dropped. I really think that's true and I want to thank you, the viewer, who may have gone to helpjeremiah.com to pitch in a few bucks to help out their family or maybe you shared the story with your friends to point out this egregious case of police brutality in rural Alberta. It's not okay wherever it happens and even though the social justice warriors at Black Lives Matter didn't care about this at all, I'm glad that you did and you shared the story and it's important that we let folks know that the charges were now dropped because of the pressure that was put on the government and the Crown prosecutors. In rural Alberta, just outside of Sundry, I'm Kean Bexty for Rebel News. So much for tuning into our coverage here at Rebel News. We wouldn't be able to do the job that we're doing, getting the results that we get without your support. Take this mic, for example. Just a few days ago in Ottawa, I had my mic hurled down the street by a radical climate activist like a football because he didn't like the questions that I was asking. Because of your support, I was able to get this new mic that I could take to rural Alberta and ask this farm family a few questions. If you want to go to helprebelnews.com, you can pitch in a few bucks to keep myself and my cameraman who's behind the camera right now on the road covering stories that the mainstream media certainly is not.